Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm Felicity. So I've been working as a tech writer for about 10 years. Up until last year, I'd always worked in traditional offices in the corporate world, documenting software. Um, last year, I went freelance. Now I contract to an agency who provides writing services to open source projects and communities. I'm also part of an embryonic open source initiative called the Good Docs Project, which some of you I know have heard of. And Swapna, can you move my slide, please? <laughs> and last year, I participated in the inaugural Google Season of Docs program, which is what I'm going to talk to you about tonight. Uh, how many of you have experience working in open source? Okay, so okay, feel free to zone out. Um, I'll see you on the flip side. Um, so for the rest of you, it's not going to. For the rest of you, the future is now. Um, I'm not going to explain what open source is. So too bad, so sad if you don't know. What I am going to talk about is my experience coming from the corporate world and what that was like writing for open source projects. Maybe you've been thinking about getting into open source, but it can be daunting and there are barriers to entry and most of us just want to feel safe and secure. <laughs> so let me show you why Season of Docs is the answer. It was a program run by Google. It ran from about March to December. And there are still some long running projects that I think some people are finishing up this month. So quoting from the website, the goal was to provide a framework for tech writers and open source projects to work together towards the common goal of improving an open source project's documentation. So here's how it worked. A whole lot of open source organisations were invited to submit projects. Google chose about 50 of them and published them. Tech writers were then invited to review those and submit proposals. Google matched tech writers to projects. Every writer got a mentor from within the community. And then the work began. The actual writing part was about three months. During the program, there was clear guidance about timelines and expectation management for both writers and organisations. The website held comprehensive documentation of excellent quality from Sarah Maddox and Andrew Chen. There was also a Slack team and an email group and writers and organisations had to submit a project report at the end of the program. So a little bit about the work that I did. The Open Source Geospatial Foundation, OSGEO, have a large number of separate software projects. And one of their initiatives is called OSGEO Live, which is a USB of about 50 pieces of software that you can try out and they hand that out at conferences. So each of those projects had a quick start tutorial and the work I undertook was to review those tutorials. So the actual nuts and bolts of what I did, I had to install OSGEO Live on a virtual machine. I reviewed the existing docs against the software. The documents were housed in a GitHub repository, so I used Git to create pull requests, a pull request per document, so there was about 50. Um, and I commented on my proposed changes. And then I worked with the document owners to obtain their approval to merge my suggested changes. My overall experience with the program was positive. I thought it was excellently run by Google. I found the OSGEO community to be welcoming, friendly and professional. It helped that there was some synchronous work time, so time zone overlap, so that I could attend their weekly meetings. I lucked on to an excellent mentor who was an open source veteran 
and he helped me through the culture shock coming from the corporate world. So that's a little bit about my story. You can go and read every writer's project report because it's published on the Season of Docs results page. I would recommend you do that to see the breadth and variety of the work that was done and to read about other people's experience. So let's look at the difference between working in the corporate world and open source. I found the writing itself is the same. Tech writing is tech writing. It's the surrounding pieces that are different and you need to manage that because often you can't just dive in and start writing. In order to understand your pad, your purpose, audience and delivery, you need to adopt the culture of the community and learn their tools and processes. Eric S. Raymond is an open source advocate and he wrote a book called The Cathedral and the Bazaar. In it, he describes open source development as a great babbling bazaar of differing agendas and approaches, out of which a coherent label system seemingly emerges only by a succession of miracles. With open source, you're coming into an established community who have been working hard to get to where they are which is not unlike a business, but it can be daunting to gain a foothold in the community. Many open source communities are distributed communities. I did some reading about different types of communities. Fabian Fort Muller explains that distributed communities have probably developed over a period of time. They have a strong sense of shared identity and they want to co-create or feel co-ownership of the work. So you're at the bazaar and you want to make connections so that you can start to do some work. You want to build rapport, but the only thing you know about people is their username. So the first thing you want to try and do is heighten your awareness of the group. Consider that shared identity and look for the code of conduct, which will typically be about respect, inclusion and honesty. I found that coming from the corporate world, the email culture in open source was something I really had to get used to. The OSGEO project communicated mainly via public mailing lists. So mailing lists are often used by open source communities because they offer conversation threading and they're easily archived. Sending to the group mailing list felt to me like I was sending a company-wide email. It took some getting used to. In a work environment, when you send an email, you usually just include your stakeholders. In open source, you're at the babbling bazaar. You don't know who your stakeholders are. And a developer friend uh, explained it to me. He said, the mailing lists are opt-in. If people find them too noisy or irrelevant, they'll opt out. If you see a noisy email list, then people will accept you adding your own noise to the thing. And most importantly, if you don't send to the mailing list, you're cutting people out of the loop who are interested bystanders or who may have something useful to add. So remember that this distributed community may want to co-create or at least wants to feel co-ownership of your work. I had to send a lot of emails as part of the work I did for Ausgeo. I had to connect with document owners personally as well as speak to the wider community. I had to manage expectations about what I was doing, engage interest or otherwise for people to be involved in my work. It takes time to send a lot of emails, use empathy to craft your message. And here's a quote from my mentor, engaging the community takes time and effort. It can be as time consuming as doing the tech writing work allow for this time when planning your project. So we've got the cons sorted out. What's next, the actual work. Here's another quote, this is from Guy Martin who works at Autodesk, he says, you have to earn your role in the community. The only way to do that is to gain credibility and make contributions. In the corporate world, when you're hired to do your job, 
your new colleagues trust that you know how to do that job because you've been hired to do it. In open source, you have to build your reputation. Commit to doing the work and then do the work that you commit to. And that's going to build trust pretty quickly. There is a learning curve and you are going to have to overcome some hurdles. In terms of process, look for the contributors guide. You may need to set up accounts, request access and permissions to be able to do what you need to do. While you're busy getting set up, you can build credibility by starting to talk to people, turning up to meetings, just generally showing an interest. As tech writers, I think we're used to getting up to speed with new tools quickly and jumping into open source an open source project is no different. Uh, in this case, you're more than likely going to be working with other open source tools to do your writing, your version control, and your publishing. You're halfway there if you already are familiar with Git, some flavor of Markdown, Linux, and maybe even working with the command line. Okay, so you're feeling confident, but don't try to show off your skills just yet. And in an article I read from Hacker Noon, it said, don't try to show off your skills. In fact, look for the easiest thing you can find. This is often labelled as a good first issue. The communities will identify easier tasks for new contributors, which can help you run through the end-to-end -end process to iron out wrinkles with process tools permissions. So that all sounds pretty hard. The Season of Docs program gives you communities who have opted in, a defined piece of work with a deadline, and a mentor. Communities opt into the program. They've had to articulate their problem and propose a discrete chunk of work that requires a technical writer. This means you don't have to find a good first issue and you've got communities who are predisposed to help you succeed. The constraints of the program mean you're not working with something nebulous. You've got a nice contained piece of work with boundaries and a deadline, which reduces the risk of scope creep. And when you reach the end date, if it's not for you, you can gracefully step away. The beauty of the Season of Docs program is that you have a buddy in the form of a mentor. They help you with the people and they help you with the tools. They also help you track to time. They've got your back if you make a mistake. It's a very secure way to work. What else do you get? Personal growth, reputation building, you're learning new tools, you're gaining writing experience. It all adds to your employability, your connections and your future job opportunities. Helping out like any volunteer work, you usually get more out of it compared to what you put in. Personally, I learned a new markup language I stretched my Git muscles and I made new friends. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Abide by the code of conduct and follow the conventions of the community. Remember to heighten your awareness of the group. Even if you do know a better tool to use or a better way to do things, don't lead with that. Establish your chops first. Be available to commit your time. Do the work you commit to. It's your reputation on the line. So the season of Docs 2020 has not been announced yet, but they have appointed a program director, Erin McKean, so it's fairly certain to be on again. She asked me to ask you to follow the Google Open Source blog for updates. And if you can't wait, there are a couple of channels in Write the Docs Slack if you're looking for opportunities to get involved. So that's a wrap, folks. Um, I've posted a page for this talk on my site, which includes all my references and credits all the images I used in my slides. Um, I, think I, I think there's time. Uh, I'd like to open the floor for any discussion or questions. I'd love to hear, hear about other people's experiences. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Yeah. Yeah. Hi. You mentioned 